An update on the backstage turmoil and drama in the AEW Women's Division and some conflicting reports about a recent possible AEW Women's Division backstage incident. Also an update on several AEW names that are currently out of action with injury, the likes of Jamie Hayter, Santana and Thunder Rosa. Could AEW be setting up possibly an announcement for a future AEW streaming service? Well, a trademark recently filed could be an indication of that. An update on Wardlow's television absence, the possible reason behind it. Several title matches have been announced for now. Next week's edition of AEW Dynamite, the 200th episode of AEW Dynamite since its inception in 2019. An update on Riho's status in All Elite Wrestling, plus the status update on Kylo Riley as he recovers from neck surgery. Why is Scorpio Sky out and what happened to him? Well, apparently it was a freak accident. Details on that. Plus, a blind eliminator tag team has stuck together and they've got a future shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. And let's start off talking about the AEW Women's Division, because certainly a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, and a lot of debate surrounding the booking of the Women's Division in AEW this week. And an update has emerged on the backstage reaction to recent booking of the AEW Women's Division following recent online criticism. While fans have always called out AEW for how they present their Women's Division, criticisms grew louder after after a sign in the crowd was shown on screen during Dynamite very clearly for several seconds that read, quote, book the women's division better. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select has now provided some insights on the backstage thoughts about the AEW women's division booking. During a Fightful Select Q&A session, Sapp was asked if people internally are as negative about AEW's women's division's booking as the fans are. Sap replied, quote, A lot of the women are, but there's also a lot of people who are very aloof and like, ah, why bother type of stuff. And obviously, you're never going to win those people over no matter what. You're just never going to win those people over. Now, when it continues regarding some drama backstage in AEW with this uh, update about uh, the backstage issues in the women's division. So this has since been disputed. So we're going to tell you the original story first and then kind of the rebuttal, the response to this. So an update has emerged on more AEW backstage conflicts rumored to involve former women's world champion Britt Baker. Now, um, in and amongst all the talk on social media about the booking, as I mentioned, of AEW women's division, as well as some criticism of the match between Baker and and Ty Valkyrie on Dynamite this week, prominent indie wrestler Lefisto tweeted, quote, It's cute how people blame booking for a bad women's division. Talent with too much power, talent denigrating each other, talent trash-talking potential employees so they never get in as soon as they walk in. It starts here. Lufisto has worked one show for AEW, that being an AEW Dark Elevation taping in April 2022, where she teamed with Emi Sakura and The Bunny in a loss to Anna J, Ruby Soho and Sky Blue. Going by her tweet, it sounds like there was some kind of situation that happened backstage, but she didn't go into any further specifics as to who there was an issue with or any wider context as to why she was having an issue or what the issue in general actually was. Now, Sean Ross out commented on this in the latest Fightful Select Q&A, addressing whether there was truth to Lefisto's comment and any other details that he could report. He said, quote, yes, there is truth to it. There is somebody that tried to hold her down, that trash talked about her. There's a lot of trash talking within that locker room. It's something that I've constantly heard about over the last couple of years. I can't point fingers and say who. A lot of people pointed the finger at Brit and said, you trash talk about Thunder Rosa. Listen, there's a lot that goes on in there. I will say this about Brit. Brit experienced some stuff that nobody should ever have to go through and I understand why she's got her guard up in that sense. But the Lefisto thing, Lefisto, among people that work with her and have worked with her, she just holds some of the highest respect and there was not so good, there was a not so good situation that I am uh, of the belief emerged from a ton of miscommunication that didn't help her out when she came in there because it was supposed to be for a lot more than what she was brought in and ended up doing, at least as it was relayed to me and relayed to her. I mean, this is from a, an April show last year where she worked Dark Elevation. She worked like a three, six woman, three minute six woman tag. There had been people that I talked to that claimed were going to be looking at her as a potential coach. And then when I followed up and said, quote, oh, what happened here? They're like, oh, I don't know. And then I was told no meeting happened, anything like that. 
Now, that story came out and started making the rounds on social media today, and then Sean Ross Sapp has very quickly played that down and disputed the accuracy of people that have been transcribing him in his Fightful Select Q&A. So he posted up a follow-up report on Fightful Select stating that a recent Fightful Q&A answer has been reported a bit irresponsibly, and he wanted to clear it up. For those that misconstrued and irresponsibly aggregated the answering of a Q&A question from this week's show, Fightful Lab confirmed Britt Baker 100% was not responsible for keeping Lefisto away from AEW. In answering the question, Fightful were also asked if there was turmoil in the woman's locker room, combined with the Lufisto tweet implying someone kept her out of AEW. Now, Fightful confirmed that Lufisto's story is absolutely one that they had heard over the last year. However, they did not know who was responsible. Lufisto confirmed to Fightful directly that Britt Baker was not involved. The second part of the answer addressed the rumoured turmoil backstage in AEW, specifically with the women's division. Now, Fightful confirmed that there had been new numerous issues over the last couple of years which have not been a secret in fact they were cru they were a crucial story point of aw all access the reality slash documentary documentary series on uh, tbs following dynamite that debuted earlier this year and of course that was a heavy part of Britt baker's appearances on the show in the q a fightful said that baker often gets the finger pointed at her for that but that she wasn't the only one they also clarified that baker had significant personal reasons to have a guard up in any situation now, Fightful say they do they have approached Lefisto for an interview on the matter and saying that if you're a subscriber or an aggregator, reach out to Fightful so you can get a better context as to what they were saying. So what are your thoughts on all of this turmoil going on backstage in AEW when it pertains to the women's division? Do you agree that the women's division should be booked better? And what do you make of all of this confusion surrounding this supposed incident involving Lefisto in AEW? Let me know your thoughts about it as always in the comment section below. I've got an update on some injuries and some injury recoveries in AEW right now. And a new report has provided an update on an injured AEW star returning in 2023, now considered to be unexpected. At Double or Nothing 2023, Tony Storm defeated Jamie Hayter to win the AEW Women's World Championship. Heading into the bout, there were questions regarding if Hayter would even compete in the bout due to dealing with some undisclosed injuries. With Jade Cargill taking time off after losing the TBS Championship and Thunder Rose is still absent, many fans have been wondering if Hayter will be making her return soon. As previously reported, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter reported that Jamie Hayter making her return at AEW All In was considered unlikely. Sean Ross Sapp, a fight for Select has provided an update confirming the Observer report, quote, barring a miraculous recovery, end quote, and there were tentative ideas that Hater could make it back to be in a featured role at the All In event. With Hater being from the United Kingdom, it is expected that she play a prominent role at the huge Wembley Stadium show. However, things now seem worse of her injury than originally anticipated. The report notes that not only is Hater missing All In, her returning this year is, quote, unexpected, and there's no timetable on her potential return as of right now so unfortunately it does look like hater is going to miss aw all in as well as missing the remainder of the year through injury which absolutely sucks we wish her the best in her recovery now a bit of an update on some other names as well of course, injuries are much of a part of the pro wrestling industry, um, but more people than you realize are working hurt, but sometimes competitors suffer from ailments that they just can't walk off. However, after taking the necessary time to heal and recover, it appears that two of AEW's finest are on their way back to the squared circle. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Thunder Rosa and Santana are currently training for their respective in-ring returns. While there are currently no details regarding timetables, the report does note that Rosa has been training in San Antonio, Texas, to, to, to prepare her for the fierce competition that awaits her in the AW Women's Division. Since sustaining a gruesome knee injury in a blood and guts match, Santana has been on the shelf for a year, but now that he's on the men, there are still questions regarding his status with AEW and his proud and powerful tag team partner Ortiz. In terms of the promotion, it's said that they have continued to pay him during the injury, despite his deal supposedly expiring last summer. As for his longtime ally, the multi-time tag team champions had a personal falling out and hadn't been on speaking terms for quite some time so again we'll have to wait and see if they come back as a tag team it looks like possibly they'll have added time onto santana's contract if we get any updates as to timetables for all three of these we'll let you know in a future video 
Now, this trademark got people quite excited yesterday because it could imply that an AEW streaming service is on the way very soon. With examples like Discovery Plus, ESPN Plus, and Disney Plus, adding the plus to the end of a brand has become synonymous with streaming, which mark makes the latest trademark filing from All Elite Wrestling particularly interesting. According to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, AEW filed a trademark for AEW Plus as it relates to the, quote, streaming of professional wrestling entertainment video material on the internet. That likely meaning AEW is gearing up to finally launch a streaming service. As it stands, AEW pay-per-views are available on traditional pay-per-view, the Bleach Report app, and internationally on Fight TV. AEW All Access, the company's reality television program, recently moved to Warner Bros. Discovery's Max streaming service, but AEW has reportedly been considering a streaming service of its own for quite some time now. Earlier reports suggested that any streaming program would likely be made with the cooperation of Warner Bros. Discovery, but there has not been much word on the streaming front since February. As it stands, AEW's sibling company, Ring of Honor, streams its own on its own streaming service, that being known as Honor Club. It must be pointed out too that AEW Plus is the name of the service that Fight TV provides for uh, co customers and consumers in the UK and around Europe to watch AEW programming too. So it could just be an extension of that, but it might be the beginning of a full-fledged streaming service for AEW moving forward. A bit of an update on Wardlow as to where he's been recently. Now, the real reason for former AEW TNT champion Wardlow's recent TV absence has potentially been revealed. Wardlow hasn't wrestled on AEW TV since dropping the TNT Championship to Luchasaurus on the debut episode of Collision. Despite Christian Cage assisting Luchasaurus in his June 17 title victory, Wardlow hasn't yet pursued a rematch for the gold. Per Sean Rossap in his Fightful Select Q&A, someone in AEW was having passport issues getting into Canada. Now, it wasn't confirmed who that was, but it does line up with the fact that Wardlow had his passport stolen when his car was broken into a few months ago. Sapp said, quote, I was told there was an issue of somebody recently that couldn't get into Canada because of a passport thing, but it, but I wasn't told who. I do know that he, he being Wardlow, pronouns pal, uh, had his taken out of his car when, he was, when it was broken into. So, of course, it could be Wardlow. It could not be. Since Luchasaurus' title victory, Christian Cage has been parading the title around as if he's the actual TNT champion, but uh, still technically it's Luchasaurus who holds the gold officially. Now, some title matches have been announced for Dynamite's 200th episode this coming week on TBS. Another title match has been added to next week's milestone installment of Dynamite. In celebration of 200 episodes, there's going to be several title matches on the show. During Friday's AEW Rampage, the broadcast team revealed that the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships will also be on the line next week. On the heels of their victory at Death Before Dishonor, the newly crowned Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions Aussie Open will defend their titles against El Hio del Vikingo and Commander on Dynamite. This match will mark only the fifth time that Commander and Vikingo have teamed together, while Commander and Vikingo's previous tag team bouts have all unfolded in trios or eight-man tag team forms. They currently hold a 3 and one record when working together. For Davis and Fletcher, next week will mark the first title defense since winning the gold. Aussie Open, of course, are no stranger to tag team titles, as they held both the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship and the New Japan Strong Tag Team Championship earlier this year. Due to Davis's knee injury, though, Aussie Open were later forced to relinquish both pairs of titles. Titles. So there's certainly a big match announced for Wednesday's show. It's not the only title match, as I mentioned, though, on the show. The Women's World Championship will also be on the line on Wednesday night on TBS. The 200th episode of AEW Dynamite will feature a title match between an AEW original and the company's current reigning Women's World Champion. Tony Storm will defend her AEW Women's World title against Hikaru Shida on next week's show. The match was announced on Friday night's AEW Rampage, immediately after Shida defeated Nyla Rose. In addition to the gold, a high-profile match will be uh, at the biggest event in AEW's history, all in at, London, uh, at London's Wembley Stadium, will likely be hanging in the balance when Storm and Shida lock up on Wednesday night. It would be a homecoming of sorts for Storm, who rose to international prominence in the United Kingdom, where she won the Progress Women's Championship in 2017, before signing on with WWE and becoming one of the centerpieces of the company's NXT UK brand beginning in 2018 as well. Shida is looking for a second reign as AEW Women's World Champion. Her first lasted 372 days and carried the company's women's division through the trying times of empty arenas and limited attendances during the COVID-19 pandemic. She's well aware of the stark contrast of those days compared to performing in front of tens of thousands of fans. Uh, quote, former no-crowd champ will step into a full-house Wembley Stadium with her bout, Shida predicted in a tweet 
Friday nights. What a moment. So several big matches announced for Wednesday's show. Speaking of the Women's Division 2, there's a bit of an update when it comes to Riho. Now, inaugural AW Women's World Champion Riho has made less appearances on AW programming in recent years after being a focal point of the division in the early days of AW. Riho was recently a part of the ongoing rivalry between the Outcast and the AW Originals, but has not competed for the company since the April 12 episode of Dynamite, with the exception of a dark match on June 14. In an update from Sean Ross Sapp in a Fightful Select Q&A, Riho's status with the company remains the same as it's always been, with her splitting her time between international dates and domestic bookings. He said, quote, Riho's status is the same as it's always been. She was never going to be over here in the US non-stop full time. That was never in the cards to my understanding. She was always going to be a person that split her time between international and domestic bookings. That hasn't changed as best as I know. Obviously, she's been in the ring significantly less over the last two years. So that's the reason why maybe you haven't seen as much of Riho recently. Speaking of people we haven't seen recently, Kyle O'Reilly. Now, obviously, Adam Cole is currently part of one of the most popular acts on AEW television, with him and MJF acting as best friends ahead of their AEW World Tag Team Championship match against FTR tonight on AEW Collision. A wrinkle in the story, though, comes in the form of Roderick Strong, who's been warning Cole about MJF and getting close to him, all while being in a neck brace following an attack from Samoa Joe. With Strong and Cole spending more time on screen together, fans have begun to speculate about a potential return for Kyle O'Reilly, who's not been seen for over a year after undergoing neck fusion surgery. In an update from Sean Ross Sapp, Kyle O'Reilly has had his broken neck fixed, but is currently in the same situation as WWE's Big E, in that it'll be a long time, quote, if ever, before he returns turns. Sap said, quote, same as Big E, it's a broken neck, fix the broken neck, and a long time before he returns, if ever. O'Reilly has not wrestled since the June 8, 2022 episode of AEW Dynamite, where he lost to John Moxley in the interim AEW World Championship number one contenders match for last year's Forbidden Door. So, as an update for Kyle O'Reilly, it's kind of the same as it's been. He's recovering from a neck surgery and he is hoping eventually he can get back into the fold. Now, Scorpio Sky has only just returned to AEW TV, but the reason he's actually out of action once again is due to a freak accident. Now, Sky was initially set to face off against Kip Sabian on Friday's edition of Rampage, but the bout was changed ahead of the show. At Wednesday's taping, Tony Khan announced that Commander would be replacing Sky in this bout, with Sky injured and unable to compete. Per Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select, Sky was actually spotted on crutches at the taping, noting that Sky had a, quote, freak accident. Sapp noted, quote, a freak accident is what I've been told just an absolute freak accident that nobody knows how long he'll be out he was on crutches at the show so obviously wish him the best in his recovery but it seems like it was just a crazy accident and uh, nobody really saw that one coming Finally, the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament has actually uh, created several tag teams that are still functioning right now. It wasn't just Adam Cole and MJF who found tag team symmetry with their Blind Eliminator random partner pairing. On last night's episode of AEW Rampage, there was a tag team battle royal to determine which team would get the next shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championships. On AEW Collision tonight, MJF and Adam Cole will take on FTR for the aforementioned tag team titles. Whoever wins that match would then defend against the battle royal winners. In the battle royal, there was the Butcher and the Blade, um, Luther and Serpentico, Matt Menard and Angelo Parker, Matt Sidow and Christopher Daniels, Matt and Jeff Hardy, Ethan Page and Brother Zay, and Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh. In the end, it was actually two complete teams left as the final four were The Butcher and The Blade and Brian Cage and Big Bill. The continuing tag team of Big Bill and Brian Cage won the tag team battle royal on last night's airing of Rampage to cement not only their partnership, but also a future tag team opportunity. So what do you think of the pairing of Big Bill and Brian Cage moving forward? But there you go, guys. It's the latest AW news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner as always let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll speak for you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon